After discussing so many planets, you requested another video on wealth in the comments, but this time on the planet Venus. So here are 10 indications of massive wealth from Venus. So without wasting time, let us get into number one. And this is again, not from astrology. If you don't have your date of birth, uh, your time of birth, or you don't know your place, or even if you don't know your accurate time of birth, if you just know your date of birth, this alone is sufficient. So what is this? This is a very special uh, combination of three numbers in your date of birth, which is uh, the first thing is number six, because the number six in numerology is the number of Venus, the planet that we are discussing today. And the number seven is the number of luck and getting things for free without doing much work. <laughs> and there's another number, which is the number of money, which is the number five. All right. So if you have the number six, the number seven and the number five in your date of birth, then this is one of the guarantees that you will have much, much, much better wealth. Now, two things I would like to say here. The first thing is, how do you know if you have six, seven and five? So you need to check if you have all these three numbers anywhere in your date of birth. So for example, you are born on 6th of July, 1995. So then you have six, July is seven, then 95 has five. Okay, or you are born on like, you know, uh, 5th July, 1996, something like this. Or suppose you are born on uh, 14th July, 1996. Now this also will have uh, all the three numbers because if you add 14 which is the basic number it comes to five and then we have seven and then we have six and <clears throat> also if you add your entire number uh, it should come to either five or six or seven so nonetheless either ways by any means if you have six seven and five all the three numbers in your date of birth or you have two of them and one of them, uh, the other one is either the sum of your basic number or your destiny number, even then uh, you have this number. And I would like to just say the name of some personalities who have this, uh, by that you will actually know what I'm talking about, okay? So uh, in my research and analysis, like uh, the gray, uh, the Bollywood superstar, Shah Rukh Khan has this, then Akshay Kumar has this, then uh, Madhuri Dixit has this, then Karishma Kapoor, she has this. Uh, then uh, the great uh, investor of India, Rakesh Junjunwala, the late Rakesh Junjunwala, he also has this, okay. <clears throat> and uh, recently, uh, the uh, Virat Kohli and Anushka Sharma, they've had a kid, the second boy, uh, he also has this in his date of birth. All right, so if you go and check, you will always find, especially in film stars, they will always have this. Even uh, Sunny Deol has this, and so many, I, I can't just go on telling you name, uh, Shilpa Shetty uh, also has this, I mean, uh, it's just there, and Salman Khan also has it, by the way, okay? So, if you have this, it means you are very lucky when it comes to luxury and money and everything combined, all right? So, this is the first indicator. Of course, just because if you have this, it does not mean you will be a billionaire or a millionaire. You need a good horoscope also, but this is a good starting point. So if anybody has this combination in his or her date of birth, then you know the person will have above average luxuries and wealth in life. Okay, And the rest will, of course, depend on his or her chart. Now, what is the second combination for grand wealth using Venus? This is, again, one of the most classic combinations that is Venus in the fifth house. Uh, but the condition is Venus should be in a good dignity. Now, this, this placement is not a guarantee for great wealth, but if the overall chart is very strong and you also have Venus in the fifth house in a good dignity. So when I say strong chart, I mean the horoscope is very strong for professional gains, for finances, money. <laughs> And then you have Venus exalted in own sign in Multricorn in the fifth house. This is phenomenal. And even better than that is you have a great chart. You have Venus in the fifth and you have Venus Mahadasha in your life around in your 20s or 30s or 40s uh, for the next 20 years. 
then this is exceptionally good. Okay. But if you don't have Venus Mahadasha and you all you have all these placements, you will still get good results when it comes to Antar Dashas. You will get name, fame, power, uh, position also because you know the fifth house is uh, eighth from the tenth house, which shows you know some new position, new job, new, new something new is happening in your life. Then number three, this is very very important and this is a classic placement for not only Venus but for any other planet also. <laughs> Venus connected to the 11th house, but in connection with Mercury. Okay, so Mercury and Venus, as you know, they can be connected primarily by two ways, either by conjunction or by parivartan, because Mercury Venus cannot aspect each other. Okay, so either they will be sitting together or they can sit in each other's houses. Like for example, Venus is in uh, Gemini, then Mercury is in Taurus, okay, because they are adjacent signs. Similarly, Venus is in <coughs> uh, Virgo and Mercury is in uh, Libra, okay. But they have to be, but Venus among the two has to be connected to the 11th house. So what does the 11th house do? The 11th house when uh, is connected to Venus gives you great association, uh, that gives you great possibility of association with film stars and uh, people connected to, you know, showbiz uh, and creativity, you know, arts, fashion and all this. And if Mercury is also there, then this means you will not just have superficial connections. You won't go to just parties. You will also gain money. Okay. Wherever Mercury is, the money is coming from there. Okay. So therefore, if you have this, make contacts with people who are in the Venusian space. You know very well. We know very well what is Venus. If you don't know, then please watch my other videos on Venus, I'm sure you will get to know more about Venus, okay? Now, number four, this is very, very, very important. This is specifically to gain fame in the area of showbiz and uh, fashion and all this. So, Venus should be in Parivartan with the 10th Lord. So, what is this Parivartan? Parivartan, as I said, with Mercury, but here with the 10th house or the 10th Lord. So, the 10th Lord is sitting in either Taurus or Libra and Venus is sitting in the 10th house. <clears throat> that is why many people will say, oh, I have Venus in 10th house. Why am I not a millionaire? Well, <clears throat> see what happens when Venus is in Parivartan with the 10th Lord. <clears throat> when two planets are in Parivartan, they are sitting in each other's houses. So they try their best to enhance each other because the more they enhance one, uh, the other, the other will enhance their house. Okay, so it's like a interesting relationship. What, what do they say? It's like a symbiotic relationship, maybe. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> so when this happens, then what happens is Venus makes sure you get fame, you get money, you get wealth, you get reputation, name, fame, power, position, authority. Uh, then this position can give you gains through government or any other services also, not just through showbiz, but it can also give you a lot of gains through showbiz and through typical Venusian means, all right? <clears throat> then number five, Venus is in Mahapurush Yoga, but very well placed. This is critical, very well placed both in D9 and D10. See, a planet is in Mahapurush Yoga when it is in one of the four Kendra houses, one, four, seven, ten and either in own sign or multricon or exaltation. So that means Venus has to be either in the first or fourth or seventh or tenth, either one of the four houses. And then the condition is it, it has to be either in Taurus or it has to be in uh, <coughs> the sign of Libra or it has to be in Pisces. Okay. So the house and the sign both are required for Mahapurush Yoga. But the problem is, uh, when when Venus gives Mahapurush Yoga, uh, Venus stays in one sign for 30 days and many people will have that Mahapurush Yoga, okay? So then does it mean everybody will be a millionaire or a billionaire? Well, not necessarily. But along with the Mahapurush Yoga, if you have a very strong Venus in the D9 chart and in the D10, both the charts, okay? Just D9 or just D10 will not help. You need both D9 and D10 then you will have <coughs> exceptional wealth from Venus because this is a Mahapurush Yoga which makes you a very great personality. But if the D9 supports, then it shows you have the potential inherently. So you don't need to work much. And if the D10 supports, it shows 
you gain a lot of wealth also through it. So it's like you have the karma, you have the skill and you have the necessary name fame. Okay, so talent, skill, destiny, everything is there. So this is a very interesting placement. And yes, by the way, if you're new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed, then please subscribe to the channel below. And if you are enjoying this content, which I'm sure you are, then please hit the thumbs up and also comment below and tell me where is your Venus and what's going on with Venus? What are some placements that you have seen that where Venus has given exceptional wealth, okay, in your near and dear surroundings? Number six, and yes, of course, if you want a consultation, you can always go to my website down. You will find it in the description section. So number six, this is very interesting. Saturn, Venus, aspecting each other. Aspecting each other means they are sitting seven houses away from each other. <clears throat> but... Either one of them should be in exaltation or in Mool's record. See, Saturn is a planet which delays things, which gives you disappointments, limitations, setbacks, problems. And Venus is the one planet which opens up things for you. Okay, so now if Venus is in a good dignity and he's aspecting Saturn, then in Saturn Dasha, what will happen is there will be obstacles, but things will happen miraculously for you. So Saturn is the primary significator of obstacles in life. So if Venus is in a good entity and aspecting Saturn and Saturn also aspects Venus. So then what happens is you are also very realistic in your approach. You know how to earn money. You know where to earn money. You know uh, where, where, how, what should you do in life? Okay, that clarity can be there if both of them are exalted or they are in own sign or mult record or at least one of them. Okay, now of course both cannot be exalted. That's not possible in uh, if there are seven houses apart because uh, Venus gets exalted in Pisces and Saturn does not get exalted in Virgo and Saturn gets exalted in Libra and Venus cannot get exalted in Aries. <clears throat> but even if one of them is uh, well placed like exalted or multi record then this means you exactly know what to expect and where to uh, where to get money okay so this can make you very 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 wealthy okay number seven is incredible venus associated with a trinal lord and the lagna lord so what are trinal lords trinal lords are lords of the fifth and the ninth okay so if venus is conjunct or aspected by the fifth lord or conjunct or aspected by the ninth lord and then venus is also somehow linked with the lagna lord see when venus is linked with the lagna lord it gives you extreme creativity so lagna lord is aspected by venus or lagna lord is conjunct venus lagna lord is in the sign of venus okay or venus is in the lagna okay either ways it gives you creativity and along with that if you have six also in your date of birth this will give you much more creativity and this will give you much more uh, creative skills and creative contacts okay but if you have the trinal lords the fifth and the ninth also associated with venus which is associated with the lagnesh <clears throat> so then what happens is you just don't have the skill you also have the doors that get opened automatically for you to get name fame from that because uh, the fifth and the ninth, they are the houses which open doors for you. So if Venus is associated with the Lagnesh, there is inherent extreme creativity. And with the trinal lords, you know how to put it out to the world. Okay, You can be a fantastic singer, a fantastic musician, a fantastic uh, painter. Just add it. Okay, You will have this if you have. Now, number eight. Venus exalted but <clears throat> unafflicted in a Kendra that is blessed by Jupiter. So Venus is exalted in Pisces. So Venus has to be exalted and <clears throat> it has to be unafflicted. Now, what do you mean by unafflicted? This is very, very, very difficult because most of the houses will have afflictions. Most of the planets will have afflictions. Aff afflictions. <clears throat> so Saturn uh, aspects three houses. And he sits in one house. So wherever Saturn is conjunct or wherever he's aspecting, he's afflicting that house or that planet. Even if he's a natural benefit in your chart. Then Mars sits in one house and he's aspecting three other houses. Then you have Rahu and Ketu also. Okay. 
Uh, then you have Surya, then you have combustion, then uh, they're like, you know, retrogression and so many other things. <clears throat> so this is a very difficult, uh, the probability of this happening is very less. And I've seen this in uh, very less charts that this uh, occurs, but wherever this special condition occurs, like Venus is unafflicted and it is in the first, fourth, seventh or tenth, and it is blessed by Jupiter. Blessed means it is aspected by Jupiter. See what happens when Venus is uh, exalted. So there is very high potential for you to achieve creative uh, success. And then he's unafflicted. So it means there is no obstruction and he's in Kendra. So Kendra will bring those traits into your real life, into your body, your health, your home, your marriage, your profession. So in the real world, you are using Venus. It's not just a hobby. And when Jupiter is aspecting Venus, then what happens? This expands. So there is enormous wealth that can come in if this placement is there in your 10th house, especially, or in the Lagna. But even if it is in the 4th or 7th, Venus exalted, unafflicted in Kendra, blessed by Jupiter. Difficult, but uh, if you have it, it can really make you very wealthy. Number nine, Jupiter and Venus are conjunct in the chart, but they are in a great dignity connected to the Lagna Lord. Okay, now this is again very difficult <clears throat> because Jupiter and Venus, they, <laughs> they may not... Uh, be in great dignity if they are conjunct together. Okay. But at least one of them should be in great dignity. The Pisces is uh, is a sign which is an exception because in Pisces, Jupiter and Venus are both in great dignity. Okay. So <clears throat> if Jupiter and Venus are conjunct, so they are sitting together in a chart and they are in a, one of them is in great dignity and they are connected to the Lagna Lord. So then what happens is, Jupiter and Venus are two greatest benefits. So when these two great or greatest benefits are sitting together and one of them is in good dignity, then they enhance each other. Okay, well, of course, there, there could be a conflict where uh, Jupiter can make you a bit more spiritual, but that can help Venus to not become attached to material things. But if the Lagnesh joins this combination, then there is enormous wealth that comes in because Jupiter, if you see in the chart, is the Karaka for the second house, 11th house, you know, so many houses. And Venus is also the Lord of the original second sign, which is Taurus, right? So therefore, this can give you success in you know, property, real estate, in finance, not so much in the uh, creative or in the showbiz side, but real estate, vehicle and uh, finance. These three areas can skyrocket with this placement. Okay. And number 10, this is of course the obvious one. Venus and Rahu are connected in the chart, but Venus is linked with the fourth house where he's in Digbal and Rahu is associated with the 10th house. Okay. So suppose Venus is sitting in the fourth house and Rahu is in the 10th house. Then Venus and Rahu are aspecting each other. Okay, this is a very powerful placement. Or Venus and Rahu both are sitting in the in the fourth house, but the tenth lord is aspecting Rahu or Rahu and Venus in this case. Or it could be Venus and Rahu are both in the tenth house, and the fourth lord is aspecting this uh, combination. Okay, and of course, if Venus is in tenth and Rahu is in fourth, even then this will apply, but. <coughs> Uh, to a limited extent, okay. But if Venus and Rahu are associated with the fourth and the tenth, uh, respectively, then there is immense wealth that comes through real estate and primarily through vehicles, through car, you know. So, any kind of tourism business, you know, uh, you can have a business like uh, event management and all this, you know, pomp and show, showbiz, and all this, you know, humongous wealth comes in, okay. <clears throat> So business related to trains, uh, buses, vehicles, cars, modernizing cars, selling them, second-hand cars and all this is Saturn is associated or if Jupiter is associated, it will be like the big brands like you know, Rolls-Royce, Mercedes, Lamborghini, BMW, uh, BMW or all, all this, you know, so <clears throat> Audi. So therefore, if you have this, remember that you can get into real estate and vehicles and pomp and show. All right. So use this. 
conjunction properly. All right. Thank you so much for your patience. Please let me know down in the comments which one of these conjunctions do you have and what do you expect in your Venus Antardasha or if your Venus Mahadasha is coming. All right. And if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. You will find the subscribe button. And for consultations, you can go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thank you.